Hey guys, this is Christian and today I want to show you some of the recent changes I've made to the cable management in my home server rack. As you can see, I did many upgrades to it just as a comparison, so this was my old setup. You can see what a chaotic mess this looked like before. And I'm really proud of what it has become. Of course, I want to show you what I exactly did to better organize the cable management in my rack and also talk about some of the tips that I can tell you. I also used an entire new solution that is called Patchbox. This is absolutely amazing and in my opinion one of the must-have tools for any tech enthusiast or IT professional. So there is a lot we need to talk about. Let's do that and thanks a lot Patchbox for sponsoring this video and helping me out with my chaotic setup. Okay, so before we dive into the recent improvements I've made to the cable management, let me take you back to how things used to look. And I have to admit, yeah, it was my best work, <laughs> just to be honest. Anyway, for those of you who have been following this channel for a while now, you might still remember when I built this home server rack and shared my initial setup video about it. I had a simple goal in mind doing this, just like most of the people when they start building a home lab. I wanted to connect a few devices in my house, such as the computer, an access point, the router, and of course I also had a couple of home lab devices inside the server rack that needed to be added to this setup, like my server, a firewall, a NAS, smart home bridges, yeah, whatever you might find in a usual home lab. And even though it kind of did what it should, the old cable management inside my server rack was an absolute mess. <laughs> Being honest with you, I didn't put a great effort into it and therefore I, it was so frustrating to work with this setup, especially when I needed to switch cables around because you know I often change things in my projects and when I was building new servers or testing different network cards and switching things around, it quickly became completely confusing <laughs> and I really didn't know where I had all the different network cables attached to. It was just a nightmare. So now it's just beautiful and it's well organized and clean so I can much better work with this setup. But let me break it down a little and show you step by step what were the actual issues and how I've managed to solve them because I hope that might give you some valuable insights and tips on how you can enhance the cable management in your server rack as well and avoid having such a complicated mess like my old setup. <laughs> so one of the main contributors to this chaotic setup was obviously the limitation of having just four network cables connected to the front patch panel that I was using. So two of these cables were routed downstairs to the living room where I had connected my router and an access point and the remaining two other ports were connected to my PC and a printer in the studio. So that was all. I had no more Ethernet cables in the house and as a result every other device is like the TV, my Xbox, my laptop and so on. I, I needed to connect them over Wi-Fi or even worse uh, when the devices didn't have a Wi-Fi capability like my servers, the smart home bridges and additional access points maybe. I had to connect them all directly to the switch somehow and to manage this I just mounted most of the other devices inside the server rack or placed them on a shelf somewhere and used whatever cables I could find to just connect them directly to the switch. And yeah, that's basically how you end up having this kind of chaotic setup as you add more and more devices to your server rack. And especially when you change things often, you experiment a lot, it just starts getting ugly inside the server rack. There's nothing you can really do about it because you, you need to connect the devices, right? So I knew I had to change this. I decided to add more Ethernet cables to certain rooms and attach them on the patch panel, having more ports on the server rack available for connecting devices. And this allowed me to move some of the devices I had placed inside the server rack before, like the access points, the smart home bridges and so on, and just place them somewhere else. So that should greatly improve the organization and provide more flexibility for connecting various devices using my patch panel. And that's how I've done it. I ran additional Ethernet cables across the living room and the studio. Instead of only having two Ethernet cables that go to the living room, I now have six where I can connect many different devices such as my routers, an access point, TV, console. That's much, much better than having them all connected over Wi-Fi. And instead of having just two cables that go to the studio, I now have four. So these I will use to connect an additional access point here in the studio, my computer, a printer and a laptop. And I also added a small eight port patch panel to the wall in my server room where I can connect smaller devices and mount them directly to the wall like smart home bridges or my Zima board, maybe a Raspberry Pi or an access point. 
And these eight cables also go right into the server rack. So in total, I now have 18 cables connected to the front patch panel in the server rack. Six go into the living room, four go into the studio and eight are going to this small mounting place on the wall. And they are all connected to the first row of the front patch panel. So this is huge because now I can connect many more devices to my network by using a solid cable connection, not having to use Wi-Fi for everything. And I also moved all of the smaller devices out of the server rack and that helped to keep it cleaner inside. So there was one big change that made it all much easier for me to organize the cable management inside the server rack. But I've also done other things. Like what you might also have noticed is that I replaced my old patch panel too. Before I was using this 24 port cut 7 patch panel, which is a shielded one by the way. So you can see this because each of the ethernet ports has a metal cover surrounding it. And the patch panel also has a metal case with a grounding cable, so which is used to prevent electromagnetic interference, shortly called EMI. However, my new patch panel is a 48 port cut 6 patch panel and it is not shielded like it was before. So that means it doesn't have a metal cover around the ports, no grounding cable and it's using the lower cut 6 standard instead of cut 7. Now I might do a dedicated video about this topic at some point but let me briefly explain this change. Of course I wanted to have a larger patch panel with more ports available but the main change is get rid of that shielding and replace the cut 7 cables with unshielded cut 6 cables. Just to say because some of the people already typing in comments. This is not what I would do in a professional setup and I'm not recommending to use unshielded cut cables in all situations. Shielded cut 7 cables are just the go-to standard in the industry, no discussion. Cut 7 provides a high speed of 10 gigabit per second or even over longer distances and it helps you to minimize EMI so that might degrade the signal quality or disrupt network performance. This can be problematic when you have strong electrical power sources nearby your network cables and that that's where cut 7 or shielded cables might be more beneficial. But the reality is that in regular home lab setups you typically don't have that. You don't have strong electrical power sources directly nearby the network cables. As, as, at least for, for my setup this is not the case. And hence there is not much of that electromagnetic interference. While there might be some rare edge cases where shielded cut cables might be necessary, I would say like in over 90% of the home use scenarios it is perfectly fine to use unshielded cut cables, you likely won't notice any significant packet losses or problems. And instead of paying a lot of extra money for this higher standard like cut 7 or even cut 8 that you actually don't really need, you can save yourself some money by just getting unshielded cut 6 cables. That makes a lot more sense in my opinion and it also has another great advantage despite of the cost factor and that is unshielded twisted pair cut cables are a lot thinner and more flexible compared to shielded cables with an additional foil or metal cover. So you can bend them much easier around corners and get more cables through a smaller hole. That's the main reason why I bought these new unshielded cut 6 cables for the setup along with an unshielded patch panel because that reduced the space I needed for my cable management resulting in a more condensed cable management and of course I could route more cables through the entire rooms. The next thing that also helped me to get rid of the cable mess inside the server rack was adding a second 24 port patch panel at the back of the server rack and connect it with the second row of the 48 front patch panel. So the second row of the front patch panel from port 25 to 48 basically is mirrored to the back of the server rack. I found this to be very useful because when you add a couple of servers or machines into your server rack that usually have the Ethernet ports on the back side and not at the front, how do you connect them easily to your switch? Well, you could just connect a regular Ethernet cable from the back of the server and then somehow route it to the front. But just imagine you need to do that a couple of times and yeah, maybe you like to switch things around later, then it's still becoming ugly. <laughs> so the solution that I came up with was just adding another patch panel at the back and have a stable unchanging connection to the front. I think that's much better and cleaner because if I now want to connect a server I can just connect a short cable to the back patch panel while making sure the corresponding port on the front patch panel is connected to the switch and that you can do much in a much cleaner way. You can see I currently don't use all of the 24 ports in the second row though. I only connected the first few of them because my switch, yeah, my switch doesn't have enough ports for this whole setup. Maybe it's time for upgrading it 
and get a 48 port switch. But these were some of the cable changes I made to the rack. I know this is a lot of work and yeah, it took me quite a while to finish this. And it's of course, as always, completely oversized for my small home lab. But on the other hand, having a nice looking home lab is what I just love and a clean and organized cable management in my server rack. I think that's just a crucial part of a home lab, right? <laughs> So these are some of the tips that I can give you from my own experience when preparing your server rack for a good cable management. Yeah, Having a big patch panel with enough ports, don't invest money into cut 7 or shielded equipment if you really don't need that. And maybe think about adding a second patch panel at the back of your server rack to have a solid connection between the front and the back that keep things cleaner inside. However, that was just the first step of the plan. Of course, you also need to connect all the ports of your front patch panel to your network devices, such as your switches, your firewalls, and so on. And one issue that still bothered me there was, how do I actually connect this massive 48 port front panel switch in a clean way to the devices? Because with just a few cables, yeah, it might look great, but as soon as you add more cables to the front, then it quickly can become an ugly and chaotic setup again. I mean, just look at this here. That's how you can end up even with this new setup. And that's where Patchbox jumped in and reached out to me. That's a system I use for cable management at the front of my server rack. And it helps me to connect all of the patch panel points nicely to my switch and my firewall. And guys, I wish I had done this earlier because Patchbox is really an outstanding cable management system. It's unlike anything else that I've seen before. I'll add you a link to the website of Patchbox in the video description so you can take a look at it yourself. But to briefly summarize how this system works, Patchbox is a comprehensive solution for organizing and managing network cables, particularly in server racks. So this is how cable management can look without Patchbox. I bet most of you who work in professional IT servers have seen these kind of setups before. And this is the same setup with Patchbox. Looks pretty nice, right? And the best thing, it doesn't just look great, it's actually even faster and much easier to use the Patchbox cable management system than using any traditional networking equipment. In professional environments, that can save you a lot of time and avoid headaches when you need to maintain even complex networking setups. In this example video from the Patchbox website, you get a good idea of it and how it's being used compared to commonly used network components. That sounded just like the perfect system for my new server rack. The the Patchbox system consists of two main components, the frame, which you can easily mount into the server rack, and this can hold up to 24 units of a modular cassette system. You can slide into the frame, and these cassettes contain the actual networking cables. The cassettes are, by the way, made of high quality stainless steel and have a pretty cool system inside. To connect two ports using the Patchbox system, you just unlock the cable stopper, pull out the Ethernet cable and lock the cable stopper after reaching the desired length. Then you simply connect the two ports, one to the patch panel and one to your switch. Uh, this is very straightforward and it doesn't require any other equipment. And the best thing is you always have the right length of the Ethernet cables. You can easily unlock the cable stopper and then the cable will automatically be pulled back by the pulley mechanism. And of course, you can easily swap out these cassettes in and out of the frame if you want to change them. You get the Patchbox cassettes in various sizes, colors and standards like cut 6 a STP or UTP or fiber optical cables in OM2 or OM4 standards. Because I switched the cut cables from cut 7 to using unshielded cut 6 cables, the UTP cut 6 cables were the right fit for me. And I also got the plus cassette sizes which offer a cable length up to 1.8 meters. If you need even more, you could also get the long range cassettes with up to 2.5 meters. I have mounted the patch box frames with the corresponding rails into my server rack before adding the cassettes. So that makes the whole system a bit more stable. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty cool with all the stainless steel cassettes inside. I also love that Patchbox is using flat cables inside. I know some people complained about using flat cables on my last Twitter post, but actually I don't have any issues with that. You can also see on their official website 
All of their cables are tested to ISO standards, so they are compliant with all the regulations and standards. Don't be worried about that. The flat cables are, of course, much better to put into these cassettes because they require less space and they are much easier to bend. And that's the third component of the Patchbox system. They have these innovative brackets you can attach to the left and right side of the 19 inch rails. And this helps you to organize your patch cables vertically and horizontally in your server rack. It's absolutely cool. I found out for me that it's the best to first connect all of the ports you want to connect, then unlock the cable stopper and bend the cables on the left or on the right side using the side cable organizers, and then just pull the cables back to use, yeah, whatever size is required. That gives you this very clean and organized look, even when you need to connect many cables. And it also requires less space, because if you would have used conventional horizontal cable managers like this here, for example, you would always lose one unit space for adding this organizer unit, not with Patchbox, because it's all easy attached on the side. And that's basically all the magic behind my cable management. A good and solid foundation using patch panels on the front and the back, and this innovative system that makes cable management easy and clean. I think the result speaks for itself. It just looks absolutely wonderful and I'm very proud of my cable setup. So what are you waiting for? Why not do yourself a favor and use some of the patch boxes inside your home lab? Trust me, it's making your life a lot easier. And if you're doing a lot of networking cable management at work, Man, using Patchbox will make your workdays even more fun. <laughs> of course, I will keep you up to date about anything else that I might change in my networking setup. As you can see, I still have a lot of free slots and maybe I need to upgrade my 24 port switch at some day. So this whole setup will probably require a change again. But that's what I've done so far. I hope this was inspiring to you. And as always, many thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.